All right, this is the second video pertaining to universal bias, also known as voltage divider bias, uh, and circuit analysis. And in this video, we're going to talk about Thevenin analysis. Um, I'm going to point out, I always prefer to do the Kirchhoff analysis, which was in the previous video. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to do Thevenin analysis. Sometimes Thevenin is a lot faster than doing Kirchhoff. But I'm also going to show you um, the pitfalls, or I'm, we're going to discuss the pitfalls of Thevenin analysis compared to Kirchhoff analysis. So the whole point of Thevenin analysis uh, applied to any circuit really is to take a complex circuit and simplify it down to a simple series circuit using V Thevenin and R Thevenin. So here is our Thevenin circuit representation of our universal bias configuration circuit. And you can see that the load, what would have been RL in the previous videos is now our circuit from base to through the whole emitter. So basically from the base all the way to reference, we're just pulling that part of the transistor and we're calling that our new load. So if we've got the base and emitter pulled as a load, and for R then we want to find the equivalent resistance from those two points. So basically the base all the way to reference. And if we look back, we can see that from base to reference, we've got R1 in parallel with R2. Now the VCC acts like a reference. So there's a, there, we can treat that as a reference. So we end up with R1 in parallel with R2. For V Thevenin, V Thevenin always wants to know the max voltage that would be between those same two points. So if we want to know the max voltage between those points, we just pull that transistor and that RE. We've got a simple series circuit now from VCC through R1 through R2, and we can find the voltage across R2, or we can kirch off back uh, through R1 and VCC and also find that voltage, and they should be equivalent. So now we found all the components. We found V Thevenin, R Thevenin. We can put our original load back into the circuit, which is our transistor base to emitter and our RE. Now we can write a uh, Kirchhoff loop equation through our Thevenin circuit, and we get minus V Thevenin plus VR Thevenin plus VBE plus VRE should all equal zero. So at this point, um, we've, we should be pretty comfortable with these Kirchhoff loop equations. The next step is to get everything in terms of current and resistance. And then I like to get everything in terms of the base current. Now we can basically solve for the IB, factor out the IB, and we end up with an IB is equal to V Thevenin minus 0.7 volts divided by R Thevenin plus RE times beta plus one. Okay, so here's the pitfall that I noted in the beginning of the video with Thevenin analysis. This Thevenin analysis is based, Thevenizing or Thevenin is based on a theorem uh, and that's different from Kirchhoff, which is a law. So we've got Thevenin theorem and Kirchhoff law. So law always works, Kirchhoff law always works, Thevenizing, not always. So here's where it's not going to work for us. And after we've calculated our IB, we need to check to see that IR2 is at least 10 times bigger than our IB. And what that means is if we've got a lot of current flowing through R1 and R2, small changes in IB aren't going to make um, any difference on the circuit. It's going to be nice and stable. The problem is if we're not greater than 10 times, or if our IR2 is not 10 times bigger than our IB, we need to go back and analyze the circuit with uh, the Kirchhoff method. Now, once we've established that our IB is good, it's 10 times smaller than IR2, we can go ahead and calculate all of our other voltages, um, get our VCE, 
get our saturation current, get our cutoff voltage, and go ahead and develop the DC load line. Make sure that our cue point is somewhere in the middle.